Gospels all make it clear that Peter is one of the, kind of the lead apostle among the apostles. But what we just heard in this Gospel passage from, from John, it, it is Andrew who first follows Jesus, and then he brings his brother Peter to him. Peter is secondary. In the other Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we run into Peter quite a bit. In one spot, he makes a profound profession of faith. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But right after that, Jesus rebukes him, saying, Get behind me, Satan. He begins to walk on water, but he sinks out of fear. Along with James and John, he is part of Jesus' inner circle. Yet he says three times that his, he does not even know Jesus when Jesus needed him most. And he was nowhere to be seen when Jesus was crucified. When Jesus rose from the dead, one of his appearances was on the lakeshore with, with a number of the apostles, including Peter. And Jesus takes Peter to the side and he asks him three times, do you love me? In that passage, you just feel Peter's kind of disappointment about himself, his actions, and his guilt. But he says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. All this means that Peter did not become the leader of the apostles or the first pope because he never failed or that he was some kind of perfect disciple. Quite the contrary. It is only as one who finally sees the depth of his own weakness and comes to know the forgiving love of Jesus that Simon becomes Cephas, Peter, which means rock. Peter became the rock foundation and chief pastor of the church. This is important for all of us to think about. I, I believe being a faithful follower of Jesus is not about being perfect or never failing. Sometimes I think we put ourselves down too much saying, well, I'm just not like that. But all of us can be wonderful disciples of Jesus if first we recognize our weakness, if we acknowledge our sinfulness, and then when we turn to Christ and accept his loving forgiveness, because Christ never withholds forgiveness on anyone in any circumstances. So we have this Christian kind of paradox. It's not logical. But when we know our weakness and then experience Christ's love and mercy, then we find our strength. As Pope Francis says, I am a loved sinner. Knowing that Christ embraces my weakness and my sinfulness is a source of joy for me. Because I can never be perfect. And I'm always going to fail. But I know he's going to embrace my weakness and my sinfulness. And therefore, I can still have that inner joy knowing all will be well. It's going to affect me, too, on how I look at each one of you, no matter what you say or do. Because the more I experience that own sense of weakness and turn to Christ and his mercy and forgiveness, the, more, the less judgmental I will be and more compassionate. What we first heard when the pandemic began was that we're all in this together. For us as Christians, it has a whole other dimension. In this business of following Jesus here on the earth, we are indeed in it together. But we're in it together as loved sinners. Each one of us always needs God's grace. And the more we recognize that in one another and, and realize that all together we're loved sinners, um, the stronger we're going to be, that's where we're going to find our strength as a community. So you might think about this logic again. Why, when we celebrate Mass, the beginning of every Mass, we acknowledge our sins. Why do we do that? Because only when we acknowledge our sinfulness and weakness, only then are we more open to the strength that Christ can provide us in his word and the sacrament of the Eucharist. So like Peter, with these gifts, you and I can become the rock foundation of Christ's church. Christ and Christ alone is our strength.